Hi, Mr. Loader here. Just wanted to share you, you the learning for Friday the 15th of January. It's for the history lesson and the role is to compare Victorian hospitals to modern day hospitals. So the first thing I think is the word hygiene is highly important and it's a word that is quite significant over the last, well, it's coming up to a year now, isn't it? Um, hygiene, how we keep ourselves nice and clean um, and it, over the last year there's been so much talk about washing our hands and keeping our hands clean to not pass on any bugs so in early victorian times hospitals were very crowded places this meant that diseases spread quickly and of course if you're not washing your hands and you haven't got very personal hygiene then that's going to make things even worse he says can you believe it well, things were very different back then. At the start of the Victorian times, doctors didn't have much choice in medicines. N nowhere near as much as we have now. They often used herbs to try and cure illnesses. Doctors also found it difficult to work out what a patient was suffering from. So they just didn't have the medical research and understanding like we do now. New medicines such as anaesthetic and antiseptics were discovered in the Victorian times. Um, Florence Nightingale, a nurse called Florence Nightingale, helped to make hospitals better. She believed hospitals should be clean and tidy places which weren't crowded. So Florence wanted nurses and doctors to wash their hands. She also made sure par patients wash too. These changes helped patients to recover more quickly and to avoid getting infections. Florence also trained nurses which helped the care in hospitals get better. So at the start of the Victorian times, this is what I want think you to think about when you compare it to modern day hospitals. They didn't um, wash their hands, so they didn't keep clean. Wounds got infected easily. The hospitals were overcrowded. Um, doctors used medicines like herbs. OK, they they didn't have a very good understanding of medicine at all and how to treat patients so there's already five things about victorian times were, that were very different to now okay and then here it says about people understanding how good hygiene was needed during operations to stop infections and this is someone here that joe's lifter lister talked about using gloves to help with that okay they also had a few different types of hospitals so um, nowadays um, we have the NHS hospitals where everyone can go and access and it's free for people but there it wasn't like that um, and there were hospitals for, for the pe poor people and basically the doctors volunteered they weren't paid so they weren't experts at all and they were just doing it off the goodness of their own backs really and that they patients only pay for the medicine they were given then you got poor law infirmary where they were for the they were the worst hospitals and there were people who didn't really have any money at all job at all and then we have cottage hospitals these were set up for people who lived too far away from a hospital and there's asylums okay people who had mental health difficulties special hospital hospitals okay and then finally hospitals for infectious diseases so hospitals were not set up in the same ways as they are now okay so this is the learning activity um you might want to split your page into two victorian hospitals and hospitals now and then you need to come up with ways or what it was like in a Victorian hospital and what it is now like in a hospital nowadays. OK, and I'll just remind you. So hospitals were very crowded. OK, there might not have even been beds for the patients to sleep, sleep in. They would have been lying on the floor. And when we look a bit more at Florence Nightingale, you'll learn about that. For example, with the Crimean War, where some soldiers just had to lie on the floor on sawdust. 
Um, wounds might not have been treated. OK, wounds got infected. Um, there was no hygiene. Hygiene was very poor. People didn't wash their hands and things. Um, they didn't know much about medicines and they used herbs to treat people. Knowledge of how to treat people just generally wasn't very good. OK, and if if you think now, think about all the fantastic equipment that hospitals have. And then hospitals back then, um, some people just volunteered to help people who didn't have very much money and look after them. OK, so the, the care would have been poor because they weren't trained. OK, and nowadays we have highly trained doctors and nurses and who specialise in certain things as well. So once you've come up with your table, um, if you can want to, there is a fly high challenge. How would the patients have felt in the Victorian hospitals and why? So think about those people who are lying in amongst people. OK, and the conditions aren't great and the treatments aren't great. Um, also, I, I thought about something else. The food in Victorian hospitals may not have been great or they might not have had much at all. OK, whereas now if you go into hospital, you looked after well and you're given a good meal to help you recover quickly. OK, now this is just something that you might want to think of. And this is prior to the Victorian times and it's just what were the theories about curing illnesses in the past? So obviously in Victorian times we talked about towards the start people using herbs. Um, these next slides talk about how people believed um, illnesses occurred before that. So people believe God would heal them. There was talk about the four humours, okay, and that there needed to be a balance for people to be well, okay, about smells and it being passed through the air, okay, so I'm going to stop there.